Hello. Um, this is my Burger King hat. I love it. Just got it. There used to be like literal Burger King uh, crowns, but they they've changed it with like glasses and everything. So I hope uh, it relates some type of artistic attribute to this video portrayal that I'm giving. It's more of a lecture that I'm giving and I want it to be uh, on the playlist of uh, social arts, um, perhaps in lectures and or um, Ethanchesis um, talks, things like this. The reason why I want this to be in a playlist and that's that social arts is because the issues I'm gonna discuss today are issues that an artist would be very privy to. Uh, so in the world of sexuality, male sexuality specifically, there could be a lot of taboo and forbidden. And in a way, if they're not artists or poets or musicians, they're really uh, getting off on the creative sexual exploration, experimentation, and or they can perceive it as a spirituality, a sexual spirituality. So in order for me to go further into this discussion, pardon me, and having it on social arts, I have to make the present presentation, pardon me, a bit artistic. That's why I have the crown. So bear with me. This here is a candle. See? Ah! Oh, candle. And it represents the honor we must give to man when he looks within his soul to make an honest investigative search of the inventory he has for morality. Put my coffee down. <clears throat> as people know, I uh, participate as a motivational accountability life coach in practice for men that are having a hard time um, coming out of the closet, say, perhaps gay, bisexual, straight, or perverted and demented and deranged. I have had more than a dozen or ten fingers I have worth of those men discussing that amid other men, they find that it's the female that encourages some of their forbidden and taboo experiences. In other words, men are coming out and saying that Their wives are the ones that are pushing the pedophilia. While men have gotten the brunt of this type of argument and they're known to be sent to prison, men have explained to me that it was the woman that wanted to bring out her daughter's panties from the drawer and get the man to ejaculate on the panties. So women are equally or maybe more to blame in this spectrum of the forbidden, of the taboo. Now that's a concern. I have to fix my Donald Trump tie. <laughs> mm. 
Reason being, that is a concern, is due to the fact finding men have a feminized psychological masculinity directly influenced by some of these women. For example, there was one man that had met a female in the parking lot of a medical center. And they got real chatty with one another. They got along. So the man said to the woman, why don't you come back to my apartment and I can make you coffee and a salad and you can hang out and talk. So she obliged. Merely from the fact that she was a bit attracted to him. But he was emotionally in love with her. He's bi-emotional. Emotionally in love with the woman but, pardon me, his physiopsychology is greatly affected by when a man comes in. You know, his heart beats and he gets exasperated. So, this man and this woman convene in the privacy of his apartment. And she feels very comfortable. She takes off her clothes, and they pretend that they're nudists. He takes off his clothes. And then she started holding him and hugging him, and he says, Whoa, I'm a gay man, she says to him. She says, Oh, but penetrate me. Have sex with me. He says, Well, you know, I'm not into that. Um, no. So she, through trial and error, learns what works for him. One of the things that works for him is when she starts saying to him, rape me, rape me, rape me. So his genitalia, his penis gets hard. And so she, he has intercourse with her. Then after intercourse, regardless of him ejaculating on her or inside of her or using a condom, she says to him, you're not a gay man. And the man says, well, yes, I am. She says, no, you're not. And the man says, well, I'm not bisexual. I'm gay. She says, you're neither gay or bisexual. He says, what are you talking about? She says to him, you're a pervert. Now, he felt degraded humiliated and the degraded and humiliated man wasn't feeling like this because he was in submission of her but outside of the role playing that they had done he is treated by her only after the sex so in any other events maybe the humiliation and degradation could have happened in the confines of the sexual act but he was told that he's a pervert after she basically, metaphorically, psychologically, raped him. And that stuck with him, predominantly because she then told him that she was married. And then she left the apartment. I have a problem with the treatment of the man and what the woman had put upon him. Men, if you are so interested in being validated by the woman that you have to do what she says and you have to be demeaned and humiliated, I want you to be strong in your psychological masculinity and confront her. This candle is for all the men that have been exploited, raped by women. This candle is for the safety 
and the well-being of all men. It is for the men and blessing the men that must have the courage to come out of the closet and talk about their experiences with their wives, school friends, or female strangers have accosted upon these men. Men, I want you to know that you don't have to be used by women. These women have crossed over the threshold of being a bitch, meaning they snap at men when they're on their periods. This is not about the women being bitches, or this type of behavior and the women constantly promoting this type of behavior, whether it's pedophilia, humiliation, degradation, forbidden, taboo, animal play, canine. These women are ugly cunts. This is for the men that need to come over their fear and show respect to women by calling these women out, bringing them forward and having them come clean on what they have done to the social institution of men, the transparency and the translucent social psychology for men that must say vulnerably that they have been defeated. Men will stand with other men to prevent this type of abuse.